Hi everyone, this is Moni from BTE Magic. How is your study going? So in the video today, we will be talking about a rumor that has been going on for ages and I'm talking about one line strategy. So what is one line strategy? It's actually related to the speaking section and specifically it's related to read aloud. So uh, in this trick, a lot of students have tried to read only one part uh, from the read aloud passage. Instead of reading the whole passage, they were reading one sentence or even just a part of that sentence. And for some reason, they could still get a high score in the speaking section. The reason why I didn't do this video earlier or the reason why I didn't talk about this trick earlier is because I didn't believe in it. And also, every time when students ask me if they sh should use this in their real test, I will always say no because I was a bit concerned about the reading of scores. Reading is a very challenging part of the exam and I didn't want you to lose points in that section. And also for you to use that trick, you need to be doing really well in repeat sentence, describe image, retail lecture and answer short questions. Okay, so please be very careful when you use that. Since there were so many requests, so many messages from students, I have decided to test that for you guys as you guys wanted me to. And I tried to use um, mock test C and mock test D in Pearson's mock test. So in mock test C, what I did was I only read the first sentence in every passage. And this is what I got. I only got 70, which is still pretty high for people who needed 50 or 65, but still not enough for people who were targeting 79 plus. So I did the second attempt, uh, which was in mock test D, where I um, read random sentences, not just the first one, but some parts in the middle of the passage. And this is what I got. Clearly, this trick really works, and I got perfect 90 in speaking and it didn't really affect my reading score. Again, I haven't tried this in the real test so I can't 100% recommend you to use this. Uh, so please be very careful uh, when you try to use this trick in the exam. But now let's check out how I completed the speaking section in mock test D. Okay, so we are going to be doing the score test D. Okay, let's go. Okay, so this is read aloud and we're going to be doing uh, reading only one line. So probably around 12, 15 or even more words. Uh, so let's just read the first sentence. It's a bit weird, but Okay, credit unions are non-profit organizations that were imported to the United States from Germany in the early 1900s. Credit unions are non-profit organizations that were imported to the United States from Germany in the early 1900s. So we're going to be completely, completely skipping the remaining part. Credit unions are non-profit organizations that were imported to the United States from Germany in the early 1900s. Okay, let's pick another sentence, maybe the second one. Uh, quantitative research involves collecting a lot of information by using techniques such as uh, questionnaires and other forms of survey. Quantitative research involves collecting a lot of information by using techniques such as questionnaires and other forms of survey. Quantitative research involves collecting a lot of information by using techniques such as questionnaires and other forms of survey. Quantitative research involves collecting a lot of information by using techniques such as questionnaires and other forms of survey. Okay, for this one, let's speak uh maybe the second part of the second sentence so the legal system of england and the legal profession of england and to introduce you to the study of constitutions as law the legal system okay one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen sixteen seventeen eighteen nineteen twenty twenty one it's like 20 words 
It's okay, let's try. The legal system of England and the legal profession of England and to introduce you to the study of constitutions as law. Okay, for this one, let's do hmm, the first sentence. This is an extremely useful resource which ranks books and academic papers on the subject, not only in terms of the reliability, but also the readability. This is an extremely useful resource which ranks books and academic papers. Reliability, readability. This is an extremely useful resource which ranks books and academic papers on the subject, not only in terms of their reliability, but also their readability. Okay, let's do the second part. Generally, these activities involve involves some reflection upon what has been learned or accomplished during the preceding time together. Generally, these activities involve some reflection upon what has been learned or accomplished during the preceding time together. This is so weird, guys. <laughs> Generally, these activities involve some reflection upon what has been learned or accomplished during the preceding time together. Uh, okay, for this one, maybe the linguistic clumsiness of tourists and students might be the price we pay for the linguistic genius we displayed as babies okay let's only read that part the linguistic the linguistic clumsiness of tourists and students might be the price we pay for the linguistic genius we displayed as babies the linguistic clumsiness of tourists and students might be the price we pay for the linguistic genius the linguistic clumsiness of tourists and students might be the price we pay for the linguistic genius we displayed as babies. Repeat sentence. I look forward to meeting you and to helping you realize your goals. I look forward to meeting you and to helping you realize your goals. Read the fitness center instructions before attempting to use the equipment. Read the fitness center instructions before attempting to use the equipment. The books are filled with drawings of machines he invented when he was a student. The books are filled with drawings of machines he invented when he was a student. Financial support can be offered to help pay your fees and other costs. Financial support can be offered to help you pay your fees and other costs. It is necessary to solve the equation to determine the unknown variable. It is necessary to solve the equation to determine the unknown variable. The book is informative, but it could be accused of political bias. The book is informative, but it could be accused of political bias. During an official ceremony, a memorandum of understanding was signed by the academic dean. During the official ceremony, the Memorandum of Understanding was signed by the academic dean. What was that? Our tutorial will take place on the second floor in room one. Our tutorial will take place on the second floor in room one. The library offers group study rooms so you can work with other students. 
the library offers group study rooms so you can work with other students. Proficiency in a foreign language may be demonstrated by assessment. Proficiency in a foreign language can be demonstrated by an assessment. Oh my gosh, repeat sentence questions work so tricky, <laughs> right? Um, anyways, um, this is a bar chart. The maximum is in New York, the minimum is in Phoenix. The bar chart shows the average rainfall in inches across four different cities. As can be seen from the chart, the maximum level of rainfall can be seen in New York with around 47.25 inches. On the other hand, the minimum level of rainfall is seen in Phoenix with 7.66 inches, followed by Honolulu with 22.02 .02 inches and Dallas with 33.70 inches. In conclusion, it shows the average rainfall in inches in four different cities. Another bar chart, percentage of students aged 5 to 17 taught at home in USA and uh, for four different uh, periods. So, yeah, from 1999 to 2012. The bar chart below shows percentage of students aged 5 to 17 taught at home in the USA uh, for four different periods. As can be seen from the chart, in 1999, the number of students was 1.7 percent, and uh, which was the minimum number. And on the other hand, in 2012, it reached 3.4 percent, which was the maximum number of students aged 5 to 17 taught at home and followed by 2007 and 2003. So in conclusion, it shows the number of students aged, uh, taught at home. <laughs> OK, so line graph. Percentage of students from disadvantaged backgrounds entering university in England. The line graph shows percentage of students from disadvantaged backgrounds entering university in England. As can be seen from the graph in 2006, it has the minimum number of students, which can be seen at around 12%. However, this number increased gradually from 2006 to 2014, and in 2014, it reached around 20%. So in total, there was 60% increase in the students from disadvantaged backgrounds entering university in England. So in conclusion, it can be seen that this graph had, has an upward trend. Okay, so this is a diagram, a life cycle of a frog. X, embryo, tadpole, tadpole with legs, tadpole with four legs, frog. So this diagram shows the life cycle of a frog. The first step is uh, where frog lays eggs and from eggs it goes to the second step which transforms into embryo. An embryo in turn will uh, become tadpole and tadpole will develop two legs. And in the next step, tadpole will have four legs and in the final step, um, it will become an adult frog. And this process will repeat again with frog laying eggs. So in conclusion, the diagram shows the life cycle of a frog. Okay, Michelle, Michelle. The first results on the Welsh language were reported in March 2003. 
The census found that there were 576,000 Welsh speakers aged three and over, or 21% of the population, which represents a 2% increase since 1991. The proportion of people in Wales aged three and over who can speak, read, and write Welsh increased from 13.6% to 16.3% over the period 1991 to 2001. A further 138,000, or 5% of the population said they understood Welsh but did not speak it. In addition, 84,000 gave a combination of positive responses that was imprecise, making it difficult to work out whether they could understand, speak, read, or write Welsh. The growth in the number of Welsh speakers has occurred largely in the south and east of the country. The lecturer talked about the Welsh speakers, and the statistic in March 2003 shows the census of、uh, 500,000 speakers, and it is 21% of population, which is 2% increase since 1991. The people aged three or over could read, write, and understand, and the number increased from 13.6 to 60.3% from the period of 1991 to 2001. Five percent of population understood but did not speak the language, and eighty-four thousand people gave positive responses. So, in conclusion, the growth occurred largely in the southeast of the country. Hope it caught my response. Another one. The most visible manifestation of this wealth <coughs> was a series of grand projects that were begun by Napoleon the Third, mainly in Paris. <clears throat> Soon after he came to power in the 1850s, he said, "I want to be a second Augustus," making reference to the Emperor Augustus's claim that he found Rome a city of brick and left it one of marble. In the case of Napoleon III, he found Paris in 1851 a city of cobblestones and twisting medieval streets, and he left it one of asphalt and macadam. Because what he began doing was bulldozing. Old Paris, the ancient medieval part of Paris, and replacing it with wide new boulevards, um, 85 miles of them、uh, that he lit with some 20,000 gas lamps, which he took out all the old 18th-century oil lamps, replaced them with gas, which gave a much cleaner, brighter, regular light.、Um, also, 50,000 trees are planted alongside them, many of them the chestnut trees that we now think of. As synonymous with Paris,、um, and he drained the street, the streets, with 200 miles of sewers, of these new famous Parisian sewers beneath the streets, thereby making the city a much more well, safer, pleasant place to wander, to stroll, to people watch, to have、um, coffee or absinthe in the cafes. The speaker talked about the grand projects by Napoleon III, who wanted to become、uh, Augustus, the second Augustus, who founded Rome city. So he founded Paris in founded Paris in 1851, and he twisted the medieval streets, bulldozing the old streets,、uh, replacing with the wild boulevards, and there were 25,000 gas lamps, which gave clear,、um, brighter lights,、uh, and he also planted、uh, thousands of chestnuts. Trees, and he drained the streets with the sewers, making the street, the cities, a safer,、um, a pleasant space to wander and to have coffee. Okay. How many years are in a decade? Ten. What do you use to identify yourself when you arrive in a foreign country? Passport, a passport. What do you press when you arrive at someone's front door? A bell, a bell. 
What is the occupational title for the composer of a novel? A novelist. A novelist. The terms circumference, diameter, and radius refer most commonly to which geometric shape? A circle. Circle. What do you call a person who trains a team of athletes? A coach. A coach. What is the term for an extended speech by one person in a play? A monologue? Monologue. Not sure, guys. Anyways, um, we're going to skip the remaining questions. We're not going to be doing writing, reading, and listening, okay? I hope this video was helpful and I will definitely uh, try the real test using this trick and see how it goes. Uh, so if you don't want to miss that video, make sure to subscribe to this channel. And if you have any questions, please comment below. Thank you for watching and good luck with your test. Bye!